to me. I don't know much crazy about that stuff. So, um, you have a whole career fair though with, uh, yeah. yeah. Well, what do you do about that? that? <laughs> the only thing I do is stay out of the way. I, I noticed that. We're pretty well. <laughs> I have little value to add to the search for careers. Yeah. And it's not my forte. Anyway, so, um, all right. So all right, thank you. you. Sure. All right, well, I want to show you guys here is something from the cryptography class, but I think not very many people are taking this end of crypto class. And I decided to do here because it ties into what we've been doing. And this is the categorical attack. I just added it here. And uh, I'm very pleased to see how all this works. And as I added to the slides this semester, you saw I showed you how easy it is to do this stuff with Python. And that's why you need to know almost no programming. To do powerful attacks. Here's all you really need. Now let's talk about this. This is how ADS works. This is the cipher used for top secret military information and everything. It's used in HTTPS connections. This is what everything relies on. And they almost all use this mode called cipher block chaining mode. So what happens here is you have a key coming in and you have something called initialization vector. It's just a random bit and you encrypt the first block of data which is 16 bytes. And you get this encrypted stuff, and then you take the encrypted stuff and use it as the initialization vector for the next block. So each block is used to provide some information that's used to encrypt the next block. Now, the reason this is done is because if you don't do that, then if you have repeated blocks of input, like this is all zeros, and that's all zeros, and that's all zeros, it all gets the same result on the output. And if you have something like an image with solid colors, it remains visible what the image is, even after you encrypt it. So this is what makes encryption have the main result, which is to conceal the plain text. So the result out here is very different. But it does introduce a weakness. And here's the weakness. Um, if you suppose you don't have 16 times, don't have 48 bytes of data, you only have 47 bytes of data, you can't encrypt less than a block of data. The way the mathematics works, you have to fill it. So you have to fill it with some kind of pad. So you have to put something there. Now, you might not know what to put there. Maybe you should put zeros there. There's different systems. One system that is commonly used is to pad it with this PKS number seven. So here's what they do. If one byte of padding is used, you use one. If two, you use two, two. If three, you use three, three. If 15 are needed, you do zero F. If there's no padding needed, you add a whole block all full of tens, which is 16 hexadecimal. That's how this works. And the point of this is you can tell the padding from the data because it always is some padding. You take the last byte and then you skip that many bytes and the rest is the real data. So it, it's not possible to be confused about the difference between the message and the padding. So this is fine. The problem, okay. So um, now, but consider this. This is how you do the padding oracle attack. The point of this attack you are trying to break into a system and you don't have the key. Now, one thing you might like is to reduce the key and decrypt the message, but that might not be possible. However, even if you can't do that, you can do other things. And what we're going to do here is we're going to trick the computer into thinking you know the key when you don't. This is often quite, this is quite common. You have something like an authentication system or a financial transfer system where you have to send a request and then you still send some kind of cryptographic signature to prove that I'm really the authorized person to send this request. And I can trick it into thinking I'm authorized when I'm not by creating a message that will pass a cryptographic test even though I don't know the key. That's the point here. So, and here's how it works. Suppose I change this byte here, byte 31. Now in Python, you start counting at zero. And I'm sticking, this is, this is zero to 15, and you write that in Python as zero to 16 because you don't include the last one. So this is actually byte number 31. If I change byte number 31, that's going to scramble all these 16 bytes here because anything changing there will change all of this. But the plain text here is used to XOR here to make the randomness for an X one in this system. So the only byte it's going to change over here is the last byte. It's going to be XOR here. So if I'm willing to sacrifice 16 bytes and let it turn into nonsense, I can control one byte in the next block. And that means I can create a message which will decrypt. So let's play around with this a bit. Uh, if I start my Python, that's good, that's where I am. 
got them in the right place. Let me put these both on the screen together and make this bigger and shove it over a bit. All right, so here's how you do AES in Python. Python. All right, you create a, you import the library AES. You have to give it a 16 byte key. I just chose an easy 16 bytes. You have to give it a 16 byte initialization vector. So I just filled those in. Now I'm gonna have a sentence 47 bytes long and I've created a cipher object so I can perform encryption. Now, um, if I try to encrypt it the way it is now, um, which is, uh, well, I'll just go through my steps here. So now, I know I'm not gonna be able to do this 47 byte long sentence. I need to add padding. Remember we said if you only have one byte of padding, you add character one. So I can encrypt that. Uh, I can test it here. Let me just first try encrypting it the way it is and show you the error I get. If I try to encrypt it the way it is, A, it complains. You aren't allowed to do anything other than a multiple of 16 bit bytes. So what I have to do is encrypt A plus character one. Now I can encrypt it. It doesn't complain. Now I can print the cyber text, but it's going to be sort of unreadable garbage. Um, so what's better is to encode it in hex because uh, if you print unprintable hex characters, it tends to have bad effects like changing the font of your screen and jumping to the next page and stuff. So that mess is the encrypted version of this readable sentence. And that's the point. It's scrambled junk you can't see. Now, I can decrypt it. So let's decrypt it here. And... All right. Um, what I wanted to do, uh, right, I need to make this modified text. I skipped over something here. Okay, here's the modified one. So this is the one I described. I'm going to change that one byte in the middle, byte number 31. Making this modified thing. And now, if I decrypt mod, okay, so let me get these two next to each other, which is that one there. So what I have done here is, this is the one I think the Madia only, okay. Um, let me just, ciphertext in code. All right, let's, um, these two, so I, I'm gonna put these two next to each other come on, so I don't get off track here. Okay, this is the input data I put in. And it is exactly the same except for one byte in the middle. The 5C has changed to FF. Um, so I'm having trouble seeing, maybe you guys, here it is, there, that's it. It's all the same except that 5C has changed to FF, okay? That's what I'm describing, I've changed just one byte. Now I'm gonna decrypt these ciphertexts and see what that does. Okay, now when I decrypt them, it starts out the same, B3AA and goes on, until it reaches a certain point here, 136, 137, now it's all different for a while. And then over here, it starts all being the same again, right around there. This block of text was completely scrambled. That's the second block. But the last block is now identical again, except for the last byte. This was the one with correct padding. And because I changed the last byte of the second block, this changed into something else. So I broke the padding, and I broke the whole mess here. This stuff was all preserved. This is the kind of thing that means you've got the end of cryptography. When you are able to control something about the changes you're making, that's a failure. What should happen is any change you make should just scramble everything. So you have no control without the key, and that's not what happened here. Okay, so we have to have a vulnerable system, and I've written one here called PADOR. Uh, this just does encryption and it defines a decryption routine and it runs it through a test to tell you if it's correctly padded and it gives you a padding error. This is what real systems did and this was the fatal error. The mathematicians designed this stuff assuming that all you have is the ciphertext and they made it so you aren't going to be able to crack it with just the ciphertext. But the people that wrote the system had it give you this error message when the padding is wrong, which seems harmless, but it's not harmless. That additional information is enough to ruin the whole system. And the mathematicians did not think of 
you're going to be telling them this extra fact. So that's the game here. So if you encrypt 47 byte ciphertext here with that system, it encrypts it because that system automatically pads it. And you can tell because if I decrypt, so I used the ENCR function to encrypt it. If I use the DECR function to decrypt it, then I get it here because it understands the padding. Now, if I encode it in hex, you can see that the last byte is actually 0, 1. The reason it didn't print here is because that's a non-printable character. You can't see it. But the decryption did include that byte of path. Now, to make the vulnerability, I take the first um, 47 bytes alone, and I add an extra A at the end. I've changed one byte. And if I do that, then I'm going to get a padding error. Because I changed one byte in the last block, the whole last block will scramble, and this will no longer be 0, 1. So now I have padding error. So this is the problem. Now I'm going to try to make a valid encrypted statement, including this word, win. So, here's, so what you do is you try to determine this intermediate value. Now, this intermediate value depends on the ciphertext here and on the key and on the block before it. But not. But actually, at this point, only on those two values, the block before it is not added until here. So I'm going to deduce this number. And this number is not going to change because I'm not going to change the key and I'm not going to change anything in the last byte. So I can deduce that and this and this, and I can work my way back until I know this whole block. And I know this block. So I can make anything I want happen here. I can make up to 16 bytes, turn into anything I want. And that's the padding oracle attack. So that's the game here. I want to vary this byte until the padding works. So um, first I need valid ciphertext to start from. So I made a sentence. This sentence says I'm a loser. That I have an encrypted message that is not what I want. I want it to say win instead. So I'm going to need this value. This is what I call original. And that's ciphertext. Now I'm going to find the value of that one byte of the intermediate. So if I change that one byte I'm changing, and I try values from 0 to 5, or 0 to 4, I should say, is what this loop is going to do, then I can see what I do. And here they are. I try 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, and they're all padding errors. So. If I want to find the ones that aren't padding errors, I can just run this loop through all possible values, like 256 here. OK, they're all errors, except for these two. This one, 154, is the one that actually works. This one ruins some data, but then it comes good again, and it has valid padding. There are two bytes that work, 147 and 154. And the original was 154. So 147 is the other one that worked. And so now, what in order to do that, to stop giving me two answers and confusing me, I'm just going to fill the entire second byte with A's, the entire second block with A's, which is going to scramble all that stuff. And now the only thing that's going to work is when I have a 1 at the end. So I fill this 15 bytes of A, then I, the next byte goes to all possible values, and I find which one of these is correctly padded. And they're all going to be junk, and they're all going to be rejected with padding errors except for one. And that's 147. So now I know that this 147 created a 0, 1 at the end, because I'm only changing one byte at the end, and the only way that can make the padding right is if that byte was 1, unless I was very unlucky, and the next byte was 0, 2. Then there would be two answers, one where this padding is 1, and one where the last two are 0, 2. If I get only one answer, I know exactly what it is. And if you look at the diagram, I know this number is 0, 1. I know what number I put here. I can just XOR them to find that intermediate value. And so that's the game here. Um, I now know when I use 147, the final byte is 1. So if I XOR 147 with 1, I'm going to have that value. And that's the game. So in the same spirit, I can find the bytes one by one until I deduce the intermediate values. And you just go through them byte by byte. And at the end, you find these values, um, 97, 0, and 150. Then I tried the last one, 
here are the intermediate values, those numbers. So I can make win. I can spell out win and put a byte of one at the end to make the padding correct. And when I do that, I can make ciphertext there, and this ciphertext can be decrypted. And now I have this sentence, then I have garbage, and then I have part of this, and then I have win in. I managed to control part of it. And I could have controlled 16 characters and made it spell out anything I want. And of course, if a human looked at this, they would spot that it's garbled. But if it's a computerized request, like a web request with parameters, I could just have a parameter here, like an amount of money to transfer, and 16 bytes might well be enough to convince it to transfer the money to a different account or log me in as a different user or something. I'm, now, I'm not able to completely crack the encryption, but I'm able to do some things which I should not be able to do. I should not be able to craft any ciphertext that decrypts to anything reasonable without knowing the key, but I can because the programmer gave me extra information in terms of that, by that error message. So anyway, try that out if you like, and I got some challenges here where you have to do it without knowledge. This one here, uh, you know the key because you can see the source code of the encryption. Here's ones where you connect um, to mine on a server where you can't see the key, and you have to construct something that has a colon and your name with the correct padding so it'll appear on a board. And, uh, there's a couple of them, I think, to do. No, just one challenge in this one. I don't know how many people made it. Let's see. The German crypto class is that. Yeah, a few of them made it, but actually only a few. And you can see he did it a lot of times, trying to figure out how to get information points in, chip did. Then uh, somebody's been trying and trying here and somehow not getting any valid name in there. So only a few people have made it. But anyway, that's worth extra credit if you want to try that. All right. Any questions about anything? Well, I'm going to stop this one and break them up. All right, I'll go to the lab and help anybody who wants to work there.